Today we're gonna break apart a pair of big chunky sneakers, stay tuned! These are Adidas DX22 Boost and they are retro and huge, take a look! Okay, to give these a bit of background, they were inspired from the 80s running shoes and are built as long walks day-to-day -day street sneakers. It's very hard to imagine playing any sport in these, except maybe chess. But these are too good looking for spending time in the park with the geriatrics. So then, let's discuss appearance. The whole statement projected by this is the boldness as a menage of colors and textures, but all fitting with each other. A woven patterned upper in brown greenish sets the tone, followed by black and tan overlays and green, gray and bright orange accents. Although these are big and bold, color-wise they don't stand out much. The pair I'm holding came in olive green orange, but you can also find them in two other colorways, black carbon red and aluminium beige silver. We can spot interesting overlays surrounding the sneaker in various materials, a black one as the toes cage, two black ones on the sides and a tan one in the heel area, matching the midsole and sidewall. In the heel area, we've got overlays on top of overlays containing overlays. The laces are also bold, coming rather from boots than sneakers, but that is suitable to these shoes. The midsole is also huge, with quirky lines and accents and some exposed boost painted in a grey-greenish color. The interior is all black with the exception of the tongue's finish, which matches the brown-greenish color that the upper has. The outsole is thick and design-wise is maybe the most quirky of them all, having all kind of patterns with shapes, lines, dots, circles, triangles and so on that seem randomly mixed and are changing constantly from heel to toes. In the logos department, not a lot of branding went into this. We can spot the adidas trefoil in the back of the outsole, the three stripes made from overlays on each side, the adidas text and trefoil on the insole, and the last one, the trefoil but this time embroidered on the tongue, followed by the model name and boost, reminding us of the famous material you in these sneakers too. But these don't feature the normal usual boost, so let's talk materials. These feature also a menage of materials, layers on top of each other to give birth to this bold design. The upper is ripstop and has suede overlays and Adidas states that 25% of the components used to make the upper are made with a minimum of 50% recycled content. Now the ripstop material that is used for the upper is the woven fabric made using a reinforcing technique that makes it more resistant to tearing and ripping. To explain this, basically during the weaving of the material thicker reinforcement yarns are interwoven at regular intervals in a cross hatch pattern and that's what makes it very durable. This material is malleable, thus doesn't steal from comfort and also breathable so you can wear this during the hot summer days. Suede overlays are featured along the upper also and we can find one in the toes area followed by additional ones composing the lacing structure and another one but in tan this time in the heel area. So we've got a total of four suede overlays. Because we're in the back the top heel area is also ripped up but in bright orange, matching the synthetic organic shaped orange accents beneath. Still here, just under the tan suede, we can spot another similarly shaped overlay in synthetic rubbery black. The interior lining is all shiny nylon except for the insole that is finished in a very soft synthetic material. Speaking of the insole, this one is very thin, one of the thinnest out there, made from soft foam. Now maybe the most important material sits in the midsole that is made from a mix of tan eva foam on the outside that is medium softness composition and boost on the interior that is in charge of contributing the most to this sneaker's comfort. But I have mentioned earlier that this is not the usual boost we are used to. Yes, 
This is JetBoost, the new boost from Adidas released in 2021. Basically, the difference is that the TPU beads that are crammed together to compose the boost material are smaller this time, and thus the material becomes firmer but more stable. We can spot the JetBoost material in the midsole's ribs on the sides, and from the outsole peeping through the small circles. Speaking of the outsole, this is rubber all the way. Padding-wise, a whole lot of it was used for this. We can spot it in the tongue, going all the way to the front to avoid lace bites, and even more on the sides and in the heel area that is rigid, supportive, but so padded that your heel will think it died and went to heel's heaven. Now if you were wondering, and if not, I was, the two black overlays that sit on both sides just above the midsole look like leather, but I think they're not. They feel like synthetic leather. Let's move on and discuss features. First of all, I'm happy to announce that this feature a pull loop in the back. I always give extra credit to the sneakers that have this small fraction of a dollar invention that I find hugely important. Huge, like these sneakers. Also huge, and maybe the most important, is of course the Jet Boost technology that we talked earlier and make this comfortable. Of course, not as comfortable as if usual Boost would have been used, but also not as unresponsive or unstable as if. So maybe that's a good thing. And they surely compensate with the heavy padding that keep your feet in fits heaven this time. The shiny nylon used for the interior helps you slide in easily, and I have always valued this material as interior lining for non-sport sneakers, and Adidas has used this on other sneakers too. You will also have to consider that on top of being heavy, these sneakers are also rigid due to the use of more firmer jet boost, an abundance of thick medium stiffness EVA foam, and a thick layer of rubber on the outsole. I am not able to bend this without the use of brute force, but on the bright side, all of this make this more durable. Also durable is the ripstop material used for the top of the sneakers, which I have mentioned earlier, that will prevent your upper from falling apart anytime soon. And because we are talking durability, a maybe overkill feature is the use of boots laces instead of normal sneakers ones, but I think it suits the design and any less of a shoelace would be embarrassed and quit their lacing job anyway. Now because we are in the lacing area, I have noticed three extra laces holes on each side that can maybe help lock your foot to the footbed from a lower point, thus maybe keeping them tighter and firmer. I know that the usual top extra lacing hole that sneakers have is intended to lock the end of the laces and keep the shoes tight especially in the heel area where unwanted movement could cause blisters, but these are in the middle where none of that could apply. If you guys know what's the intended purpose of these extra holes, please let us know in the comment section. Nevertheless, it is a good design choice to place the eyelets on the suede material to stop laces from tearing through the material, except for the top and bottom ones that have sewing around them to stop the rips in the rip stop material. Oh, okay. What I personally admire is the use of a thick suede as cage for the toes, protecting them from any accidental kicks. That happens to me and it seems like I'm not the only one. One quirky feature that I find useful in running sneakers from where this was inspired from, but could also work as a great design feature here, is the use of four reflective bright orange accents in the heel area that become extremely visible when they are hit by strong light. That gimmick will surely turn some heads at the party. Enough partying, let's draw conclusions. I consider these to be bangs for box sneakers that on top of being comfortable they also can fit any casual or sporty look and that is really a great achievement. Yes, they are rigid, Yes, they are heavy, but we will not play sports in this. These are excellent as daily drivers or even long walks. Also, this will make you taller thanks to their big midsole and will add about an inch and a half to your height. So if you prefer the look, you have found the right shoes for you. Now, to discuss the elephant in the room, yes, this resemble the Easy Boost 700, except for the breaking the bank part. So if you want a budget pair of sneakers that look like some iconic ones, this is the perfect choice and your bank account won't even notice. Now, checking out the reviews on Adidas website, these have a rating of 4.6 out of a total of 5 stars from 45 reviews, from which only one review is a 1 star one. Also, these are reported to be a good size and fit, so not too narrow and not too wide, so you can order these in your actual size. In the looks department, people consider these as being dead shoes, but I don't. Because middle aged tend to wear them, it doesn't mean that they're boring or not stylish. What do you think about this? Please leave your thoughts below. As for me, see you in the next one.